Jim from O2. Um, some big news here at Music Mesa, right? That's right, Nick. We, um, the big news from O2 here at Music Mesa 2016 is uh, we've announced a new Thunderbolt ASIO driver for our latest generation audio interfaces. So uh, this will allow um, Windows users to now use their Thunderbolt Motu interface with their Windows box. And uh, this affects um, all the interfaces in the latest generation line, like the 1248 that have Thunderbolt connectors. Um, so that includes the 1248, the 16A, which has uh, 16 analog in and out. Um, 1248, of course, has uh, lots of balanced analog TRS in and out, and plus four mic pre's, um, lots of digital I.O., and just really superb analog audio quality. These interfaces um, really excel in how good they sound. Um, so that's the two Thunderbolt models there. We also have an all-digital model called the 112D. That has Thunderbolt as well. Uh, 112 channels of digital audio in and out. And uh, you can use now connect this to your Windows box over Thunderbolt. And then the final model is uh, the 8M, which has eight mic inputs in one rack space. So as far as computer connectivity, they're all the same. They all have Thunderbolt, these four models, but they also have USB. And it turns out that this driver update is also a complete rewrite of our USB driver. So you're going to see improved round-trip latency performance through USB, and you're going to see industry-leading round-trip latency performance for Thunderbolt as well for both Mac and Windows. And this driver update is going to be available by Q2 of 2016. Wow, so uh, I guess the thing is next, I mean, you know, Thunderbolt is has been slow to be adopted by Windows uh, builders, really, more than that, but now the OS is right. kind of supporting it at core. So does this mean um, that we might see AVP on, uh, on Windows machines as well? I guess that's not You never know. You. you never know. It's really, um, it's up to the PC OEMs to build USB, or sorry, AVB into their Ethernet chipset, um, which Apple has already done in their, their models uh, for quite a while now. But uh, also, it would be up to Microsoft to build it into the OS. I mean, that's what allowed us to do it on the Mac. The Apple rolled it into Yosemite and then El Capitan, where they improved it uh, for direct connectivity with AVB. But, um, but uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see where it heads on Windows. And in the meantime, Windows users are going to be able to do Thunderbolt on um, a, a, an emerging new class of PCs that all have Thunderbolt built in on the motherboard. Intel's really been pushing this hard. And PC OEMs are really jumping on board, especially with the advent of USB, or sorry, uh, Thunderbolt 3 um, on the Type-C connector. So what uh, what kind of Thunderbolt will these guys work on? Is it kind of any Thunderbolt, or do they have to be Pretty two much. enough? No, any Thunderbolt. And if it is a... a Type C connector, you know that small new round connector, it's yeah. very slim. Uh, sort of the one one connector to rule them all. It does Thunderbolt, it does USB three, it does USB two, it does DisplayPort, it does power. So uh, it's a it's an all in one type of thing, and uh, you know it'll, it'll just depend on uh, just you know if, if you if you have that kind of connector, you just get a cable. Get the right adapter. And adapter yeah, cable. It's simple, and and there are affordable adapter cables now available. So you can go Type-C to regular Thunderbolt as a passive cable up to, I think, one and a half meters, and it's a very affordable. Oh, that's because, yeah, they're like 800,000 pounds for, yeah. <laughs> for two Yeah, minutes. no, no, the passive adapter cable is going to be very aff affordable. So. And so this is going to be in the summer. Um, is that, I mean, are you, are you seeing, are you conscious of which manufacturers are going to roll in these Because I know Hewlett Packard are doing a lot of pro high-end uh, video and audio machines now dedicated for that kind of creative. Side. Have you seen any uh, any Thunderbolt connections? Um, what I've seen is um, Asus, HP, Dell. Um, a lot of the sort of leading OEMs have really jumped on board with the whole Thunderbolt rollout. It's interesting, isn't it? Because I mean, Thunderbolt really is certainly from a. It's quite a pro connector because of its capacity. So I suppose you know it's often last to, to go out there really. Right. But uh, um, okay, so but Thunderbolt really is characterized by incredibly high bandwidth, super low latency. And um, I, I, I would see it as sort of the, the replacement for PCI as far, as far as pro audio goes. I mean, if you were a PCI guy on Windows, you really should look to Thunderbolt to the future because the really fast killer PCs moving forward are all going to have Thunderbolt. So you should look into that and think about a Motu Thunderbolt interface because you'll have industry-leading round-trip latency performance, really high bandwidth, great driver support. And if you're wondering, well, what, what PCs do this now, I think a really good place to go is the Intel website because Intel is really pushing 
Thunderbolt, special, Thunderbolt 3, especially on Windows, and they'll have a complete list of a lot of the leading um, uh, machines out there now that, that do it. So in terms of patching, can you take sort of Thunderbolt in, I mean this is generally speaking, not necessarily on Windows, and then send route those channels to uh, AVB and Analog and all the other, you've got all of that interconnectivity, right? We do, we do. Um, we have, every Moto interface has a full 48 channel mixer, but it also has a routing matrix. And the routing matrix will basically take any enabled input and allow you to route it to any enabled output. And that includes computer channels, um, local uh, I.O. on the box itself, or AVB network streams. So even if you're networking in audio streams from other remote interfaces, you can route them wherever you want in the interface to and from Thunderbolt or wherever you need. And, they, and I guess the Motu stuff just announces itself on the AVB network and says, I'm here, this is what it I does. got. Yeah, it's basically plug and play. You just plug in your interface to the network, it shows up, you choose whether or not you want to broadcast streams, and then those streams show up to all the other devices on the network. Any other device can see them as soon as you say you want to broadcast them. Um, this may be a question that uh, you might not be able to answer, but I was talking to a guy uh, earlier, and they've adopted AES67 as a network uh, protocol for audio, which seems to be able to listen, to, you can publish streams, can you publish streams via AVB into AES67 for, uh, format uh, via Motu stuff or is that still uh, somewhere else? That's not supported as of today but it is something that we're looking into because AES67 is obviously gaining some momentum as well in the industry and so we're taking a look at that as well. It would be great to have everybody talk everything, that's just it the truly ideal would. scenario. It truly would. Thank you very much Jim. Alright Nick.